the biggest challenges of this really has to do with the engineering complexity. So we're really having to work as team science and team engineers to make sure that the data we're collecting is good enough for the algorithms that we're creating to create the information. That is, do you have sleep apnea or not? So there's clinical definitions of sleep apnea we're trying to meet, but then we're packaging this in a in miniature to make it comfortable. So it's it's a challenge of form and function and technology together. What we're doing is testing our device as a screen for sleep apnea against the standard methods that are used in the hospital or in the home today. You know, it's important to note that there are a lot of wearable devices on the market now, but one of the major disadvantages of a lot of these devices is they really haven't been tested against widely accepted standards in their respective fields. The National Institutes of Health is basically the landmark organization to fund the trials that are necessary to show both the safety and efficacy of products that will first and foremost uh, make people healthier, but in this instance of important healthcare transformation in the United States, also be cognizant and fiscally responsible about the funds we have. So to shift a, a cost of a $3,000 in-hospital sleep study to a very accurate, uh, well-studied, over-the-counter product that might be used at home uh, would be much more efficient, in my opinion, in terms of the early diagnosis and potential treatment of sleep-related disorders. Often people aren't seeking treatment. It's estimated 75 to 80 percent of individuals who have obstructive sleep apnea are not identified for that disorder. I mean, people who are chronically exhausted are overwhelmed. They don't, you know, they don't have energy. They're feeling like they're always kind of fighting, fighting the day. It impacts their ability to schedule with the doctor to plan to be somewhere overnight. Well, there's two really big things that we're trying to change. One, because it's wireless, you're not tied down to your bed or tied down to a particular way of sleeping. And it's really comfortable. When we did our test in the phase one part of this project, 80% uh, of our users said that they never felt this or they never really disturb, it didn't disturb their sleep. We think that's what's crucial to this in that when you go to a lab or a sleep study, you've, you're all wired up and it's uncomfortable. It's not the natural way you sleep. You're just hooked up. If they weren't comfortable, they didn't have to wear it. And no one refused once I came in. And for a lot of them, it was because they felt the research was so important. And I, I, I was surprised by that. I felt like people were, you know, as I say, pretty overwhelmed about coming in. A lot of times I'd be talking to them while they're being hooked up with the electrodes and so on by the sleep tech. And a lot of them said, I would do this research any day because I feel like it's something that if I can help somebody five years from now not have to go through all this, I would do it. So we've got design patterns in terms of how it looks. We've got algorithm patterns. And um, of course, there's a lot of innovation going into how to package this into this very small profile. Eventually, it would be a really nice thing for these people to be able to go and you know, buy this at a CVS and then you go home and in the morning you, you know, have some information to have a doctor decide whether or not, yes, this is urgent, you need to come in and be treated, uh, or, you know, you're okay, you have some issues going on, but we'll, we'll, you know, sort out a diagnosis that does not, you know, implicate the sleep apnea in the way that it may have, depending on the screening. And one subgroup that we're focusing on in this particular project is elderly individuals and the prevalence rates for elderly individuals are significantly higher than it is for individuals who are in the 30 to 50 age range. Um, so they're at increased risk and of course uh, uh, older individuals are also at increased risk for things like hypertension and heart failure and stroke, all those things that obstructive sleep apnea can be uh, a major risk factor for. As we try more and more to prevent clinical conditions through diagnostic testing, drawing cholesterol levels for hyperlipidemia, doing a mammogram to assess for early breast cancer. I think it's important uh, that the health sciences world innovate and create similar diagnostic tests for sleep quality and is also for the medical diagnosis of sleep apnea. Having a diagnostic test that is accurate, convenient, and low cost in the home would be an important advance forward as we really appreciate the underestimated impact of low quality and poor sleep.